everybody, my name is Madison and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Today we are going back to something I attempted to do probably, I mean it was back when I was in uh, high school but that was only a year ago actually. Um, well, it was September of 2022. So, just over a year. And I think it was before that. So maybe in 2020, I don't know what the year is. But I tried to do a TBR, add a whole TBR game. It was fun while it lasted. But now I have a job at a library and I bring home so many books I never would have heard of had I not worked at a library. Um, and that's, that's this. These are all the books I have uh, uh, checked out for my library. Some of which I've renewed more than two times. I still haven't read. Um, so, for this video, I am going to make a TBR for the month of January to hopefully tackle some of these books, and then for fun, we're going to pull out maybe one or two books from this cup here that just has all of my, um, unread books on my physical TBR. That way, I am still getting to the books that I actually own and not just the ones I bring home from the library, uh, but I am focusing on the ones I bring home from the library because not only is, um, these from, are these for my job, but it is part of my job to recommend books. And right now I'm in my nonfiction era, so a lot of these are nonfiction. So we'll come to this to get some fiction, fantasy, and all that good stuff. So, before we get started, I have 12 books behind me, um, some romance, fantasy, and then a lot of nonfiction. So, we have all of that, and there's 12 of them. So let's get into it. I'm going to roll three books from a random number generator um, from here, and then we will pull one or two from here. It truly depends on how big these books are because I typically am lucky to read about four books a month. So let's just get into this. Let's roll up a Google random number generator. Alrighty, let me make sure. Okay, so one to 12, let's seven. Okay, that was anticlimactic. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is actually perfect because I actually have a hold on Libby for the audiobook, and I've been on hold for the audiobook since April of 2023. So this is Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Gillian McAllister. This book, whenever it came out, I heard about it. I don't know from who, but it just sounded really interesting, and I'm not much of a thriller person, but this is something that grabbed me, and I knew I wanted to read it, and in fact, I hounded my coworker to bring it back to the library so that I could have a physical copy, and now that I have a physical copy simultaneously with the audiobook, I know I need to read it because I need to return this, and the audiobook goes back, and there's two people on hold for it after me. So the fact that I got this for this month, January, seems like a, it seems like it was just meant to be. But Wrong Place, Wrong Time is, to my knowledge, it is a uh, mystery thriller type book about a mother who sees her son murder somebody and then goes back in time the day before it happened. And then after that day, it goes back two days before it happened. And then it continues the cycle. And she's trying to stop and figure out why her son murdered somebody. And that is all I know about it. And I also know one other thing. That Kayla liked this book. And if Kayla likes a mystery thriller and gives it above a three star, I think that means it's very good. Whether or not it's going to be for me is something I don't know, but Kayla did indeed like it. I will say I'm not a big fan of the font size in this book. I don't like I don't like the font size, nor do I appreciate the um the type of font. It's just not I don't really like that. So anyway, this is the first book. It needs to happen, um, so stick around and we'll see if I do indeed read it. All right, let's move on to book number two, 11. That is perfect. Ah, this is another one that's actually really perfect. Okay, so if you're, and they just fall down, they, I don't know what it is, but one book just will not stay up. But if you're wondering why this is on my TBR, this is The Haunted School by R.L. Stein. This is a Goosebumps book. It is short. It will be like an hour, maybe two tops of a read. So if you're wondering, Madison, why do you want to read Goosebumps? You're a college student. Well, first off, 
let people read what they want to read. Secondly, I thought this book was a fever dream. Like, I kid you not, I, like, one day I was just, like, thinking of this plot, and I was like, wait, is that an actual book? So I googled the plot, and R.L. Stein's The Haunted School came up. I just remember, like, these people entering into a world full of asphalt. Like, it was just asphalt everywhere. It was, like, gooey, and I don't know if I'm misremembering this book, or if this will even be the book I'm thinking about, but I did want to read it. Um, I even had my coworker get it from another library. This one came from... Gypsum? I don't even know where that is, but this came from Gypsum, uh, Colorado, their library. And all I have to say is that I want to read it and see if this is what I remember as a child. Um, and I think it's going to just be a fun little short book. It'll hit, help me hit my 50 uh, books in the year Goodreads goal. So I'm going to take advantage of it. And I'm very happy that we got this because I actually need to return this in two days. So what am I reading tonight? This one. Alrighty, and for the third and final roll, we got number six. Okay, uh, nine. No, I can't do it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, y'all. This might get you to unsubscribe from me. So book number six is Lost in Translation by Miriam Grossman. And I cannot actually probably tell you what this book is about because uh, YouTube will say no, 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 and then you'll never hear from me again. But I would definitely recommend looking this book up if you are interested in this topic right here. Uh, but this is a child psychiatrist guide out of the madness, and it just talks about this issue, this issue for children, and kind of how it is um, ruining, like, our society. And it has so much information in it. I've watched Miriam Grossman in the Matt Walsh documentary, yes, that documentary and she really seemed to know her stuff in that and then this book came out and I asked my library to get this book and six months later we got it it's mine for I'm the first person to check it out and I really do want to read it but this is going to be like a heavy book because it is so fact-filled and also the topic of this book as well is just something that is really sad to think about but I also think this is going to be a really important read um and so I want to give it a shot okay now that was our three little random number generator rolls and because I have one book on here that I have an audiobook for and another book on here that's only a hundred pages I think we're gonna do two books out of this fun jar so the pink books are the or the pink slips are the ones that I, can't, I literally work at a library, so saying pink slip is something that I can't think about and say without going to the library term, uh, which in my library, pink slip is an interlibrary loan, aka an ILL, which means we get a book from another library. Anyway, fun facts, but the pink sticky notes are the books that I have and I own physically, and the green ones are the ones that are on my Kindle. So let's give this a little try. Oh wait, no, hold on, I can see. I, don't, I can't look because I can read the titles. I'm really hoping I don't get another nonfiction. There's one nonfiction on my shelf I've owned for years and I don't want it. Okay. Um, oh, I pulled two, so this is what we'll do. We have The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier, which I will grab. And, oh no, 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 no. It's Empire of the Vampire. That book's 800 pages. <laughs> Oh, I should have only done one. Oh, oh no. Regret. Regret. Alrighty, so first we pulled Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pau Preto. No, this is not the one we pulled. What the heck? No, no, no. In my defense, these two are right next to each other on my bookshelves, but we pulled The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier, which is She Came for Revenge. Will she stay for love? This is a very well known and to my knowledge, very well beloved ro romantic fantasy um, in the YA genre. So this says, 
names. Lovely. Uh, Khalid, the 18-year-old Talib of Khorasan, is a monster. Each knight takes a new wife only to have her killed by sunrise. Shah Rasad is the first volunteer to become Khalid's bride. She vows to stop his reign of terror for the friends she lost and for all of those who perished before her. Incredibly, Sharad managed to survive her first morning and then the next. Night after night, she's mesmerized the caliph with her storytelling, at once buying time and digging deeper into the elusive boy king's past. If Khalid is truly the murderous madman everyone says he is, how does Sharsad find it so easy to fall for him? Just a quick question. Why do we have to have some complicated names in fantasy worlds? Varfur. Like, I know, I play Sims, sometimes my babies get crazy names. But, like... Why? Anyway, this is, like like I said, very well-beloved, and it has pretty decently sized font, and I think I'm going to enjoy it. My mom actually bought this for me in one of my previous videos from, like, a while ago, when my mom surprised me and bought everything on my Amazon wish list, um, and so I've owned that, I've owned this book for that long, so it would be good to actually get to it. The one I'm not excited for is this behemoth, uh, Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. This is my first Jay Kristoff, and I am currently uh, 80 pages into it because I had the audiobook for a while, and I would I was making some I was making some progress in the audiobook, but I am almost 100 pages into this book, and I've yet to be hooked. It's 800 pages. Y'all, I'm one-eighth in this book, and I'm not hooked yet, Jay. What the heck is that? But the whole reason I own this, too, is because I have, I got the, I found the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. And the thing is, I don't even like the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. <laughs> I didn't want to read this book, and then I saw that I, I saw my Barnes and Noble had a special edition, and I was like, "Ooh, I want it! I got it!" And I don't even like the cover. I like the white better, or it would look better if it was black. The original cover is black, I think. This would look better if it was white. Like, why is it all red? Why is it just the same shade of red with a different texture? That is terrible. Who made this decision? Who made this color decision? I hate you for it, and I hate myself for owning this. Um, anyway, I don't really know what this is about. Um, it does have these really pretty end pages, so I guess I can appreciate that. And it is signed by Jay Kristoff, so there's that. But, like, the cover, I hate it. Uh, but this is some type of, like, adult vampire story. From the holy cup comes holy light. The faithful hand sets world alight. Nope, a right. I'm sorry. And in the seven martyrs' sight, mere man shall end this endless night. It has been 27 long years since the last sunrise. For nearly three decades, vampires have raged war against humanity, building their internal empire even as they tear down our own. Now, only a few tiny sparks of light endure in a sea of darkness. Gabriel de Lyon is a silver saint, a member of the Holy Brotherhood dedicated to defending realm and church from the creatures of the night, but even the Silver Order could not stem the tide once daylight failed us, and now only Gabriel remains. Imprisoned by the very monsters he vowed to destroy, the last Silver Saint is forced to tell his story, a story of legendary battles and forbidden love, of faith, loss, of fr and friendships won, of the wars of the blood and forever king, and a quest for humanity's last remaining hope, the Holy Grail. So, basically, you have Gabriel right here, and then the vampire who is being forced to write the story to, and I honestly, like, I don't really know what this is about. I mean, people like this book, and the sequel is, like, coming out this year or something, or it came out last year, and it's just as ginormous, and it's a, fr it's got French, um, inspiration in it, so I don't know. Maybe once I get into this, I will enjoy it. Uh, but I'm not enjoy enjoying it yet. And The Empire of the Vampire is actually one of the books I am trying to read for a book video I've been working on since last year, which is where I read my TBR of Shame. And I've jumped back between 
The Empire and the Vampire and Art of Prophecy, which is also halfway through, I'm halfway through that one on my TBR shelf. I just jump between those two. I'm like, oh, I have the audiobook, Empire of the Vampire. Oh, I don't have any more Art of Prophecy. Like, I truly just am reading both of them for that video. Um, so I'm probably going to feature all three books that I have for that video. But <sighs> once I finish Empire of the Vampire, I can probably put that video up. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So these are the five books on my January TBR. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little chaotic, at least towards the end. I thought I, thought I was doing pretty good at the beginning. Um, but yeah, this is my TBR, and it doesn't look that insane if you take out Empire of the Vampire. Like, this is doable. This seems a little bit more terrifying. If I can get the audiobook for this, my hold for it to come back, because I have pushed that hold back so many times, but if I can get my hold on the audiobook for this to come back, it may be doable. But I'm also like, maybe I need to read it physically again, because I, I don't know. I don't really know. Maybe I just don't like the main character. I don't know. It's a complicated relationship. But hopefully I will be able to finish these two books that I pulled off of my uh, shelf so that the, the stickers don't have to go back into the cup. And hopefully I can read these so that I can return them to my library. But that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below because I post videos whenever the ideas are flowing. And sometimes I got a lot of ideas and sometimes I'm silent for months but I have a second channel where I post sims videos so if you still like me and you want to hear my voice and you like my chaos uh, go subscribe to that I promise you it's insane anyway I'm gonna see you guys all in the next video I love you all so 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 much and adios goodbye and I'll see you guys in the next one